What's up guys, I'm Irishelle and this is The End Times. So far we've made three different videos exploring the ominous and mysterious being that comes out of the bottomless pit, Abaddon. Abaddon part 1 and 2 and the four beasts of Daniel chapter 7. But I don't think any of them have actually been this long, for which I apologize. But foundations gotta be laid and rabbit trails must be followed. So let's just bite the bullet and dive right into this. In the book of Revelation, we're told that there are seven trumpets. At the fifth trumpet, there was a star fallen from heaven and was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. When the bottomless pit was opened, first came smoke, like the smoke of a great furnace. Then from the smoke came locusts that were given power like the power of scorpions. This is where we'll pick up our verses. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11 through 12. They have his king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is called Apollyon. The first woe has passed, behold, two woes are still to come. Now the first thing I want you to notice is that Abaddon, the king over the locusts, is referred to as an angel. The second thing is that John says that Abaddon is also known as Apollyon in Greek. This isn't just some name that the Greeks attributed to him. No, that's a false statement. Nor am I calling him by a name made up by the Greeks in order to prove my point. Abaddon, the Hebrew name, literally means destruction. So let me be very clear. The word of God directly says he is called Abaddon in Hebrew and Apollyon in Greek. In other words, this is his name in two different languages. I didn't just come up with this to prove my own beliefs. My beliefs are molded by scripture, not the other way around. Now, angel in Greek is that Greek word right there which doesn't really help us much. But in Hebrew, angel is malak, which means messenger. So angels are messengers, and if they're messengers, then they have to be sent by someone. Now the author of Hebrews says that the angels are messengers sent by God to the saints for their benefit. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? So angels are messengers, specifically ministering spirits sent from God to help the saints. For more on angels, check out our What Are Angels video, which is under our Too Deep category. This means that Abaddon was originally a messenger from God intended to minister to those who are to inherit salvation, but fell from grace and was placed in the bottomless pit as punishment. For the sake of time, we're not going to get too deep into this, so check out our previous video, Who is a Bad in Part 2, The Lucifer Connection, which is under our The End Times category that goes into great detail on how we came to that conclusion. Now, as we stated in part two, Abaddon is referred to as an angel in Revelation chapter nine, verse 11, but in Revelation chapter 11, verses one through 14 and Revelation chapter 17, one through 18, he's referred to as the beast of the bottomless pit. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, Abaddon and Lucifer are the same being. Lucifer was thrown down into the bottomless pit as recorded in Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 15, yet in Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 through 12, only the smoke, the locusts, and Abaddon come out of the bottomless pit. Now as Isaiah chapter 14 verses 3 through 4 says, Lucifer, who is also Abaddon, is the king of Babylon. Let's read Isaiah's account of Lucifer real quick. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 15. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high, but you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. The translation, day star, isn't an accurate translation of the original Hebrew. Again, part two covers this in detail. Anyways, Lucifer fell from grace. He was once good, as all things were created very good according to God himself in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31, but he sinned greatly and was punished by being thrown into the bottomless pit until his sentence is completely served. Now Lucifer, when he rises from the bottomless pit in the future, will establish Mystery Babylon, Revelation chapter 17. After that, ten kings are given royal authority and will rule the ten districts that make up Mystery Babylon. Then another king will rise and that king will rule all of Mystery Babylon, Daniel chapter 7. Now this king is mentioned in the book of Revelation, 2 Thessalonians, and the book of Daniel. 
Revelation chapter 17 verses 9 through 11 says, This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. They are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain only a little while. As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven and goes to destruction. Now you may be thinking, what kind of rabbit hole are you going down, Ari? Well, we did an in-depth study on the seven kings in a two-part video series entitled The Seven Kings of Revelation Chapter 17, which is under our The End Times category. And in it, we explain that these are the seven types of the man of lawlessness that 2 Thessalonians Chapter 2, verses 1 through 12 warns us is coming. Now, contrary to popular belief, there is no such thing as the Antichrist. That's not a thing. Antichrist is a spirit that denies Jesus as Lord. Therefore, anyone can be ridden with this spirit. There's no evidence of any kind in scripture that the coming king is called the Antichrist. The only way to come to that conclusion is to ignore scripture and either hold to church tradition or believe you know better than God himself who breathed out his word. Not only would this be holding an inaccurate and unbiblical belief, but this is also adding to scripture which is forbidden according to Proverbs chapter 30 verses 5 through 6. Now, while the Antichrist is a type of spirit, the man of lawlessness is the seventh king that is coming who will usher in the great tribulation. For more on those two subjects, check out our videos, The Antichrist and The Man of Lawlessness, which are both under our The End Times category. With that said, there are seven kings prophesied about in Revelation chapter 17 verses 9 through 11, which we just read. Now, in that two-part video series, The Seven Kings of Revelation chapter 17, which is under our The End Times category that we talked about a little earlier, we explained the seven kings and who they are. We explained that they are Pharaoh, king of Egypt, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the unnamed king of Media and Persia, Alexander the Great of Greece, if history is correct, Domitian, emperor of Rome, and the final king will be the man of lawlessness described in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. That will be the king of mystery Babylon. Now, I say all of that because the third king mentioned was Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Now, Nebuchadnezzar didn't start out as a type of man of lawlessness. He wasn't born evil. In fact, God referred to Nebuchadnezzar as his servant. Jeremiah chapter 27 verse 6. Now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I have given him all of the beasts of the field to serve him. This isn't the only time God calls Nebuchadnezzar his servant. Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 9 and Jeremiah chapter 43 verse 10. Now with that said, Nebuchadnezzar's fall from grace was prophesied to him in a dream. Daniel chapter 4 verse 10 through 17. The visions of my head as I lay in bed were these. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong and its top reached to heaven and it was visible to the end of the whole earth. Its leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it and the birds of the heavens lived in its branches and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head as I lay in my bed and behold a watcher, a holy one came down from heaven. He proclaimed aloud and said thus, chop down the tree and lop off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beast flee from under it and the birds from its branches, but leave the stump of its roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze amid the tender grass of the field. Let him be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his mind be changed from a man's and let a beast's mind be given to him. And let seven periods of time pass over him. The sentence is by decree of the watchers, the decision by the word of the holy ones to the end that the living may know that the most high rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will and sets over it the lowliest of men. Now, according to Daniel's interpretation, the tree that was chopped down is Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 4 verse 19 through 27. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, 
was dismayed for a while and his thoughts alarmed him. The king answered and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation alarm you. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream be for those who hate you and its interpretation for your enemies. The tree you saw which grew and became strong so that its top reached to heaven and it was visible to the end of the whole earth, whose leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant and in which was food for all under which beasts of the field found shade and in whose branches the birds of the heavens lived it is you o king who have grown and become strong your greatness has grown and reaches to heaven and your dominion to the ends of the earth and because the king saw a watcher a holy one coming down from heaven and saying chop down the tree and destroy it but leave the stump of its roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field and let him be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven periods of time passes over him this is the interpretation o king it is a decree of the most high which has come upon my lord the king that you shall be driven from among men and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field you shall be made to eat grass like an ox and you shall be wet with the dew of heaven and seven periods of time shall pass over you till you know that the most high rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will and as it was commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree your kingdom shall be confirmed for you from the time that you know that heaven rules therefore o king let my counsel be acceptable to you break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity and i just want to make some connections for you guys real quick Nebuchadnezzar's greatness had grown and reached heaven, but he was chopped down. Lucifer was cut down from heaven because he desired to go above the stars of heaven, according to Isaiah chapter 14. Now, that wasn't quite the exact sin as Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar's sin was pride, but his glory, according to his dream, had reached heaven. Before we get into Nebuchadnezzar's sin, I want you to also make the connection between Lucifer after he rises from the bottomless pit in the future and the punishment of Nebuchadnezzar. We explain in part two that Lucifer, Abaddon, is only referred to as an angel in the first mention of him. But after that, in the next two times he's mentioned, he's referred to as the beast out of the bottomless pit. This is very similar to Nebuchadnezzar's punishment. Nebuchadnezzar was given the mind of a beast and his dwelling place was to be with the beast of the field. I believe that there is a much deeper meaning to this, which I intend to, on doing a video on this in the future but until then essentially nebuchadnezzar was given the mind of a beast for seven periods of time then after that his mind was restored to him when abaddon rises in the future he's referred to as a beast what if he's referred to as a beast for seven years in revelation chapter 9 verse 5 we're told that abaddon and his locust army will wreak havoc on the earth for five months without any of their victims dying which is a pretty terrifying thought but if we think about these as five literal months we can make an educated guess of how long abaddon is called a beast right since abaddon isn't called a beast during those five month period i won't include it in the overall sum now i believe that after the five months are completed abaddon goes out and kills the two witnesses which is the first time we see him called a beast in the book of revelation after this, he conquers all of Israel, including the temple, and he begins to form Mystery Babylon. He then reigns with the ten kings for one hour. Now, I don't believe that this one hour is the same as our hour, and I'm not sure how long it is exactly, but, but when we begin to factor in that he's been called a beast from before he establishes Mystery Babylon, one could argue that it would take at least two years to completely conquer Israel as well as establish and set up an entirely new nation by combining ten other nations or territories. Then the ten kings who reign with the Badin for an hour is at least another year. So that's at least three years at the very minimum. Now after their hour of power is up, Abaddon reigns with the man of lawlessness because there are seven kings, but Abaddon is the eighth, but he belongs to the seven. Revelation 17, 9 through 11. As we discussed in our video series, The Four Beasts of Daniel 7, which is under our The End Times category, Abaddon is the fourth beast, and out of the fourth beast comes a king that will put down three kings and reign for a time, times, and half a times. Daniel chapter 7, verses 23 through 25. This is around three and a half years long. But according to Daniel chapter 7, verse 26, and Matthew 24, verses 15 through 22, 
these days are cut short. So how long will his reign last? Now, according to Jesus in Matthew 24, 15 through 22, this takes place after the abomination of desolation is set up in the temple of God. Thankfully, Daniel, he gives us a little bit of an approximation. Daniel chapter 11 goes through the kings of the north and the south, which leads into the beast of the sea, the beast of revelation, rising to power, reigning, and even his demise. And this is all recorded in Daniel chapter 11, verses 20 through 45 to be exact. For more on his reign, check out our video entitled The Beast Out of the Sea, which is under our The End Times category. Now, the next chapter tells us not only of the approximate timing of the rapture, but also tells us how long the earth will last after the abomination of desolation is set up in the temple. The number that we're given is 1260 days, or three and a half years, Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. So let's add everything up then. Abaddon is first called a beast when he goes out to kill the two witnesses. He is referred to as a beast again when he ushers in Mystery Babylon and then reigns with the Ten Kings for an hour. All of these events add up to at least three years. Now somewhere at the end of the reign of the Ten Kings and right before the reign of the Man of Lawlessness, the Abomination of Desolation is set up in the temple. From that time to the end is three and a half years. When we add this up, we get six and a half years. But since we currently don't know how long it will take to kill the two witnesses, establish Mystery Babylon, reign with the Ten Kings for an hour, and the setting up of the Abomination of Desolation, one could argue that it will be seven years in order to mirror Nebuchadnezzar's time as a beast because they are part of each other, in a sense. According to Isaiah chapter 14, due to Lucifer being the spirit behind Nebuchadnezzar and his downfall. Now speaking of Nebuchadnezzar's downfall, Daniel chapter 4 verses 28 through 33. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, Is not this great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? While the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagles' feathers, and his nails were like birds' claws. Nebuchadnezzar's sin was pride. It was believing that he accomplished all that he had by himself, which included his glory reaching to heaven. This is an interesting connection. I believe that this is most likely when Lucifer was thrown into the bottomless pit. Why, you may ask? Because when a nation or king is punished, the gods behind that nation or king are also punished. For instance, when God punished Pharaoh in Egypt, God also punished the gods of Pharaoh in Egypt, Exodus 12, 12. When the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant and placed it in the temple of their god, Dagon, not only did plagues come upon the Philistine people, but Dagon fell before the Ark of the Covenant and even broke, 1 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1-12. through 12. Do you think that this was just a sign for the people? The form of God flexing his muscle? I don't think so. I believe God was showing the people that he was also punishing their god, Dagon. Now, after Nebuchadnezzar's punishment, he looked up to heaven and declared that the God of Daniel was the one true God. Daniel chapter 4, verses 34 through 37. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, What have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor returned to me. My counselors and my lords sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, for all his works are right and his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Could it be that Nebuchadnezzar was able to see who the true God is because his God had previously failed him? 
Not only did he fail him, he was punished just as he was punished. This is pretty similar to what happens in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 17 verses 12 through 14. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour, together with the beast. These are of one mind, and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. They will make war on the lamb, and the lamb will conquer them, for he is lord of lords and king of kings, and those with him are called and chosen and faithful. The ten kings reign with Abaddon. Apollyon, Lucifer, the beast out of the bottomless pit, whichever one you prefer, they reign with him for an hour. How long this hour is, I don't know, but I do know that it is not very long. Now after this hour, three of them will fall to the man of lawlessness and he will reign. Daniel chapter 7 verses 23 through 27 tells us so. But those who remain will make war on the Lamb of God, Jesus. But look at what happens after they make war on him. Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 through 17. When he opened the sixth seal, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth. The full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone slave and free hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can stand? They're defeated at the time of the rapture. And they then see the Son of God seated on his throne in all of his majesty. Now during the wrath of God, these kings have a different outlook on how they react to the Lamb of God. Revelation chapter 16 verses 12 through 17. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and his water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. And I saw, coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs, for they are demonic spirits performing signs who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. And they assembled them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The beast, not the beast out of the bottomless pit, but the beast out of the sea and the false prophet. Also not the beast out of the bottomless pit, but the beast out of the earth, according to Revelation chapter 13 and Revelation chapter 19 verses 20. With the dragon, who is Satan, according to Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, had to send out three unclean spirits like frogs to the kings of the world in order to assemble for battle again, but this time at Armageddon. Why did it take three unclean spirits like frogs to convince the kings of the world? Because they just saw Abaddon, the only being able to kill the two witnesses, according to Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 through 14, they just watched him be destroyed. How can we be sure? Well, first and foremost, he's not mentioned anymore after chapter 17. He's nowhere in the wrath of God or even the final judgment. Secondly, Daniel prophesies this very thing. Daniel chapter 7 tells of four beasts that will wreak havoc on the earth. The fourth beast will also be a kingdom, and from him and his kingdom will come ten kings. Then after those ten kings will come a final king who will knock down three kings as he comes to power, which we talked about earlier. Now look at what Daniel says will happen to all four beasts. Daniel chapter 7 verses 11 through 12. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking, and as I looked, the beast was killed and his body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. The fourth beast was killed, and his body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. But the first three beasts lived, but their dominion was taken away. The first beast is Satan, the dragon. The second beast is the beast out of the sea, the beast. The third beast is the beast out of the earth, the false prophet, and the fourth beast is the beast out of the bottomless pit, Abaddon, Napoleon, Lucifer. We did an entire series going into great detail explaining each of these beasts, who they are, and how we can be sure who each one is. Again, it's called the four beasts out of Daniel 7, which is under our The End Times category. So after so, so, so many words that I'm sure you're all still contemplating, 
I'll sum everything up for you guys into a nice little compact paragraph. Lucifer, Abad, and Napoleon, and the beast out of the bottomless pit are all the same being. He was thrown into the bottomless pit as punishment. When Nebuchadnezzar was punished, because Nebuchadnezzar was under the influence of Lucifer when he sinned, both of their sins were rooted in their own glory. Lucifer is the king of Babylon, and throughout the years, six kings have risen to power and had his spirit. They were six types of the man of lawlessness. And in the future, the seventh king will be the coming man of lawlessness that Paul prophesies about. Nebuchadnezzar was the third of the seven kings. Both Lucifer and Nebuchadnezzar started as servants of God, but after their fall from grace, they were compared to beasts. They both received punishment as beasts for seven years. I hope this video was enlightening and answered any questions that you may have had about the connection between Abaddon and Nebuchadnezzar and that you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.